Hey, what are you doing? I am also practicing how to shoot with mobile camera the sometimes. Wait, so where will you be pointing and shooting? Where would be the focus? Focus will be obviously on the sun. Oh, you mean here? Sort of focus. Hey, I don't have such fancy equipments like you, right? That I can change settings and all. You know, you can actually manually control your mobile phone just like a DSLR. Besides, you're holding it in such a way that it will create shake and blur your entire image. You should always use a tripod and then shoot. Oh, I thought that tripods are for DSLR. Okay, let me use my selfie stick then. Hey, no, that will still create shake because you're ultimately holding a stick. So always use a tripod. It does not matter which camera or lens you're using. An advanced DSLR or a beginner's device or even a mobile camera. First of all, before shooting any landscape, Think about the following, lighting, composition, subject and timing. Depending on those, you choose your frame. You don't always have to shoot, keeping the rising sun in the middle of your frame. Think about the perspective, get it? Well, I think we'll be shooting the sunrise, uh, so sun will take care of the lighting. What else you said, composition? But nature will be composing this brilliant scene. And what else, timing? What better uh, time to shoot the sunrise than I have heard something called golden hour. I think the light will be brilliant at that point of time. I think tomorrow we are going to be in golden hour, right? And the uh, perspective. I mean, it's a new day, it's a new dawn, new beginning. Darkness will be dispelled by light. What better perspective to shoot sunrise for? For those who have seen my first video on Kalapathar Beach, you sure remember me mentioning about Turkish word Yakamoz, which is a beautiful phenomenon that happens at night when the flickering moonlight reflects on the water. It also describes the blue fluorescent glow created by bioluminescent plankton in the water. Similarly, sunlight and water together can conjure many striking moments, like this display of small sparkly sun drops dancing over the waves known as sun glitter caused by specular reflection, which is a mirror-like reflection caused by light reflecting on water, also known as glint. In the wee hours of the morning when the sun is just beginning to appear above the horizon, or even during dusk when the sun is about to set, then you will often observe this mystified signature glint. So yes, shooting directly at the sun is not the only way to capture sunrise on a seashore. So go ahead and capture the impact, create a splash.
bird photography or wildlife with an existing mobile camera? Why we are talking about bird photography here? Let's focus, we are putting landscape. Okay, show me how we can focus on mobile camera. One hour later. So how do you tell the camera which part of the scene you want in sharp focus? If you don't tell the camera, it will automatically slip anything, no? I don't talk to my camera. Well, I will just focus on the subject in Zoom. In iPhone, you have to only tap on the screen where you want the focus to be. A yellow box shows up indicating where the camera is focusing. Then you need to swipe up and down to adjust the exposure. Hold down the screen for a moment to lock the exposure once you have chosen the right exposure for your shot. Then, wherever you move your phone, the exposure will remain fixed as you choose. All Android phones also offer such options. Why do I have to do all of this? Suppose people are walking in the back and there's a movement in the scene. When you're capturing landscape. Even if you have tapped to set focus on your foreground subject, the camera might readjust the focus onto a person walking through the background. As soon as you press the shutter button, the camera forgets where you focused in the previous shot. So, you'll have to tap to set focus again for each new photo. To avoid that, you need to lock the focus and exposure. If you want to adjust exposure, you can do so without unlocking the focus. Yes, so once you set the focus, make sure there is no change in the distance between the camera lens and the subject. Depending on when the focus is, the same picture can tell a completely different story. My Instagram account has some nice examples of how only shifting the focus can impact your image. As you can see, here birds were out of focus in this photo I have taken in Sydney Hut Wetland near Port Blair. But in order to capture the reflection, I have to keep the focus fixed so that the camera doesn't interpret that I actually want to focus on the bird at the distance. Take this photograph. As you can see, the focus is slightly off and the photo of the bittern didn't come sharp. Not necessarily, only sharp images qualify for good photography though. If I want my image to convey about the habitats with the capital C, an emphasis on a specific bird species is not my concern. I can treat this as shooting a landscape and keep the flock off focus. On the other hand, when I wanted to focus on a species, setting the focus right blurred some grasses in the foreground and kept the image sharp. And yes, when it comes to wildlife, I will not use mobile camera at its present capacity, unless something extraordinary is unfolding in front of me and I got no other choice. Because even if you add an external ultra-wide telephoto lens to your smartphone with high-quality optics, still, it will not be any match to a DSLR camera with a decent lens. But when it comes to landscape, things can be different. Thank you, Tarinandi and Shomi Mitra, for joining in this kit with me to drive the point home. If you are in the same space as me in this kit, or if you are just learning the ropes of photography, and even if you are at an intermediate level, this video will be an eye-opener. Suppose you are not a professional or hobbyist like me, even say you are not a photography enthusiast. You just like to capture memorable moments from holiday nevertheless using your phone camera. Let me tell you that if you got iPhone or high-end Android phone with good camera, nowadays you can do magic only with them if you learn all the settings and functionalities. Even otherwise, if I learned anything from pursuing my interest in photography over the years, it's this realization that sophisticated devices are good to have, but certainly not a deterrent for taking wonderful photos or videos. <music>
However, let me tell you that this video here is not a beginner's photography tutorial. While I'm going to mention some important concepts keeping landscape in purview, I'm not going to teach you here technicalities of photography. If you want me to make such videos in the future, depending on how you like this one, uh, let me know in the comment section below and if I get enough such requests, I will definitely consider making such tutorials. In this video, I'm focusing on how to shot magical sunrise on beach with a mobile camera. When I say that, I mean at least a mid-range Android smartphone, preferably a high-end one or iPhone. With basic phone, frankly, you will not be able to get quality shots, no matter how much creative you can get. But if any of you are watching this video who don't have a mid-range smartphone, or DSLR, can't afford this at this point of time and at the same time you are curious and interested about photography, then let me tell you that a used gear is still an useful gear. Uh, consider secondhand devices in good condition or check whether renting works for you. Until you can afford the right accessories, keep the wish alive and burning. Note that a gear is as good as the person using it. And over the years, with a fair amount of field experience, I have seen enough photographers with great camera routinely making average photos. So I want to shake off this inhibition and this mindset that I notice around. I'm just casually clicking some random images because I don't have sophisticated gears. No such excuses will work once you watch this video. As a reference, I will also talk about how to best you know, experience sunrise in Kalapathar Beach of Havelock Islands, uh, where from you can take great shots there, while sharing some hidden inputs about the terrain that will help you with make the most out of your journey. For those who were acquainted with my Andamania series, you already know that this is the continuation of part one, where I spoke about uh, everything to make your uh, Kalapathar experience spectacular. But no matter what's your beach destination, this part two will equip you with photography ideas of sunrise beyond regular tips. Watch this video till the end and if you put some effort, I believe that you will be soon making some great shots and footages. And don't forget to share this with your friends who like to capture nice moments. If you have noticed my tip number 5 on the screen, I have mentioned about reaching preferably before an hour of the sunrise. Arriving 10 minutes late for the rising sun is no fun. Nevertheless, at times you can get amazing glow just 15 minutes after the sunrise and that warm glow can offer you an ideal light for portraits too. However, you need to anticipate where the cloud covers can possibly be when the sun is about to peak over the horizon. You need to experiment with exposure, so you need time. Bottom line, we have to use the brilliant light to our advantage by planning in advance. What I find the most exciting part during sunrise is Due to the dynamics of natural lighting, a scene can completely shift from every 5 to 10 minutes. The time lapse of sunrise that I have shown in the part 1. Most professionals don't prefer to capture that because the sun is already over the horizon and light already has become too intense. The moments between total darkness and that fast hint of light are highly coveted period for professional landscape photographers. This is loosely known as golden hours, what photographers go gaga about. But golden hour typically occurs when the sun is between 6 degrees below the horizon and 6 degrees above. Contrary to popular notion, this golden hour doesn't always last for one hour. The duration of this brilliant natural light depends on both the latitude and the season. Why the quality of this light is far superior to say what we experience at midday? That's because the midday sunbeam travels straight down, passing through around 11 miles of Earth's atmosphere before hitting our subject. In contrast, a sunrise or sunset sunbeam comes at our subject from a low angle, traveling through 200 miles of atmosphere. As the sunlight travels for a much longer distance to reach the surface of the earth, the atmosphere diffuses the light, making it soft, warm and dramatic. This period is actually too short to start fiddling with your equipment and settings, so we need to be ready. I found timeanddate.com's sun calculator to be highly accurate in this regard. You can even find moon spark, phases, illumination, and what other planets will be visible in your shooting location's night sky from here. You can also try mobile apps like Sun Position to figure out the golden hour of your specific shooting location. It's recommended to check details on the previous night when your shooting ground is remote location like Kalapathar, where mobile data may not work.
Did you come across similar characters during your travel? If you exercise a little bit of your power of observation, you will notice those diverse schools of thought. And for me, that's the first requisite to become a good photographer. And coupled with the power of imagination, the ultimate decider that sets your photo apart. Otherwise, everyone is watching the same sunrise and shooting the same scene. Of course, some technical knowledge is needed as photography is both an art and science. So there's this free app called ProCam which I use and this offers full manual control over your photos and videos available for both Android and iOS. Once you install this app, first and foremost, let's check camera settings. Activate the rule of thirds. Now what purpose does it serve? Rule of thirds is basically a compositional guideline that places your subject in the left or right third of an image. The rule of thirds splits an image into thirds, both horizontally and vertically, so we have 9 blocks and 4 grid lines. At the center of each grid line intersection, you can position your point of interest, such as head while shooting a portrait or eye of your subject. So when you want to follow this to compose a neat image of sunrise, you would place the horizon line around the top or bottom horizontal grid line. ProCam actually offers a grid overlay like DSLR so that you don't have to imagine these lines while shooting. Now you can absolutely create beautiful compositions without using this tool, but this is an excellent way to get started and this will certainly make your photos more balanced yet dynamic. Now this is 7am in Bangalore after 3 days of in-season rain and so it's a complete washout in terms of sunrise. But in coastal locations, even though it's this overcast, you will get some interplay of natural light near the horizon. Because no matter how much you plan and keep your itinerary flexible, you can't control with the situation. So if you face a completely dark scene out there, see what else you can do in terms of capturing the impact on the surrounding. ProCam has three different types of back cameras. White camera W is the main one, T denotes the telephoto camera and UW is the ultra wide camera, the one I would use for landscape. As you can see, you can slide left or right on controls to manually set shutter speed, ISO and wide balance. You can then tap on the string to set focus and tap with two fingers to set focus and exposure. If you double tap on the string, the focus will come back to auto. Tap the lock button to lock all the manual controls. Also, this app offers exposure bracketing which is an easy way to photograph high contrast scenes and much more beneficial than using preset filters of mobile. You can use exposure bracketing to create pictures with different exposure settings. The purpose of this is to cover more of the dynamic range. Bracketed photos are used later to create an HDR photo which is high dynamic range photo. Typically, modern cameras are good at determining the right exposure compensation for each shot. But the technology isn't as advanced as our eyes are. What the camera sees as the correct exposure value isn't always right. The exposure bracketing technique is a way to overcome this limitation. It allows you to capture the same scene multiple times with different settings to blend later. Now there's a paid version of this app called ProCam 8, which is arguably the best camera app for iPhone and Android now. But for a free version, this is pretty advanced, isn't it? <music> By this time, we have established that sunrise is all about being at the right place at the right time and if weather permits, finding the right lighting condition. Coastal locations offer the perfect setting for sunrise photography because both elements, fire and water, can blend rather beautifully. Also, the best vantage point of any beach changes throughout the year based on the season and so is the sunrise time. As for Kalapathar, you need to decide your vehicle on the previous night because during this time, you will not get on-the-fly vehicles to reach here, regardless of which part of Havelock you are coming from. Websites like AccuWeather can tell you the exact sunrise time along with hourly forecast, but for Andaman, I found the Mossum app to be more helpful as you can also get to know marine weather condition with precision. The pre-dawn period works best for long exposures and that's one of the main reasons to come early. The longer the exposure time, the more movement you can catch in your time-lapse. 
Also, the main beach with umbrellas and beach huts is usually crowded in season, so start walking along the seaside and cross the dense forest to reach towards Wild Orchid Resort. Carry flashlight and use insect repellent. There is a small lodging path through the green jungle where once was an elephant training camp, but now you will find a secluded beach. This spot offers the best landscape for horizon-level panorama. Ask locals for directions and there's no chance to get lost if you take the correct left or right once since you will be walking along the straight shoreline. It's usual to find very few people around here, if at all. Mostly naturalists and photographers experienced in this terrain come here. Typically, a partly cloudy sky will offer more to play with and so photographers smile when they see 20-30% to 30 of cloud cover. Worst case scenario, if sun can't be seen at all, you can also focus on the forest at back, which will produce unique and dramatic images in golden hue. As mentioned before, you may want to capture the impact of sunrise in your surroundings too, rather than only focusing on the rising sun. In fact, the best way is to turn around to waste and put the sun behind you. Then your subject will be illuminated from the front and it will be evenly well lit. Make sure your subject is not too close because then you will cast a shadow on it. Photopills app can calculate best settings for you including time-lapse settings that tell you how much time, memory space and shots you require. I use two mid-range DSLRs with wide-angle telephoto zoom, GoPro along with my mobile camera, all positioned at different angles and elevations to compose sunrise. Having said that, I have shown you that what's most important is to put your existing devices to their best use instead of feeling mentally crippled due to the lack of best gears. These days, many seasoned photographers use mobile camera to shoot landscape. So even if you happen to be in a beach or other landscape destinations where everyone around is using professional camera to shoot, don't hesitate to take out your mobile camera, play around with settings, keenly observe and think what you want to capture instead of impulsively clicking the shutter button and most importantly, have some fun doing all this. First few outings will not produce good results if you are new with technical aspects of photography. But don't just decide the quality of your future shots based on those first few shots. And even if you continue to royally mess up, who can deny that witnessing sunrise and attempting to capture nature's neglected everyday magic is a good start of the day? Thank you.